there. Good morning. This is Obun Naya Aboke, and um, it's a privilege to be doing this or uh, to be part of this school. I want to appreciate my brother, Mr. Elijah Chikode, for the privilege to um, to be doing this. I trust that you are going to be blessed immensely. Um, for this lesson, we will be dealing with um, building and sustaining a viable spiritual atmosphere for your home. Now, it's a topic that is um, that is both profitable to the singles and to the married. So, um, if whoever you are, if you stumble into this video, you'll be blessed. I promise you that God is going to reach out to every one of us and give us his blessings in measures that we have not known so um let's just say a word of prayer father lord we thank you for this privilege we thank you for having given us this access to your word lord we pray that you will give us revelation knowledge knowledge that will profit us even for our families for our homes in the name of jesus amen all right, we'll quickly go into the details because I don't want this video to be long. Um, um, about 18 minutes, 15 to 18 minutes should be okay. So I'll be as brief as I can and as quick as I can. So the topic is building and sustaining a viable spiritual atmosphere for your home. And the first question should be, why the home? Is God interested in the home? And the answer would be yes. God is very much interested in the home. You know, the first family that he formed, <coughs> the first um, family was Adam and Eve, right? And he told them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. So God was instructing them, raise families, build homes. Do you understand? He told them, be fruitful. That be fruitful is not, um, is, is half children, is half children. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, replenish the earth. Do you understand? So God is interested in your family. And then when you go to the book of um, Jer um, Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19, God was talking about Abraham. He says that I have found this man so that he will be able to guide his children and household according to my ways. Do you understand? So God is very much interested in family. So the reason that he found Abraham according to that scripture is so that he could guide his household his children and his entire household according to the ways of Yahweh. Do you understand? Then in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 15, we also see God speaking and he was saying that he has made them one, that's the husband and the wife, he has made them one so that they will have what? So that they will raise a godly seed. A godly seed. That's talking about children, talking about families, talking about homes. So God is very, very, very much interested in families <laughs> now there's a funny um, thing that came to my mind while i was thinking through this topic you know in the in bible times that's in the old testament you, you see a place that the scripture says that when a, a, a man gets newly married he should not go to war for one year he should not work for one year <laughs> do you know for one full year that is how delicate see delicate now that is how um, um that's the kind of premium that god puts on marriages Puts on homes that God is is willing to exempt a man for one full year from war, from labor, from work, so that he could just dwell with his wife. Get they get to know each other. They get to build a strong family system. So that is how God, how much God is interested in families. How much he is interested in homes. Do you understand? So God is interested in families. And what's more, the devil is also interested in families. Yes, the devil is interested in homes, is interested in families. Little wonder you see all the disruptions going on in marriages is because the devil is interested so in families and in homes. Now, the first family, Adam and Eve, came and the devil disrupted their marriage. He, he, he came to Eve and deceived her. You know, it was not only a deception of humanity. He was interested in their marriage. So he caused a disruption in that unity in the marriage. Now he went further in the next chapter in Genesis. 
he went to two brothers, Cain and Abel, and you, and you know the result. One killed the other. So the devil is very much interested in homes, in families. Um, look at Job and his wife. The devil came to his wife and, you know, caused a separation between her and the husband and, the, and, and Job. The, um, the wife told him, cause God and die. Thank God Job didn't cause God and die. And, and die. So the devil seeks to destroy homes. So God is interested in the in the family, in the home. The devil is interested in the family, in the home. And what's the reason? It's simple. The family, the home, is the building block. Is the fundamental unit of the society. A good family will make a good society. So if all families that are like units in the society are good, that society is good. So you don't fight, um, you don't try to build a good society from outside. No, you take it from inside. Once we have good family systems, good family units, the nation will be good. So everything you are talking about on earth starts from the family. So if children are raised in a family and they are not good, that society will not be good. But if the children raised in families are good, the society will be good. The art will be good. So that's the reason God is interested. So even though the big picture is that the whole art, you know, will be good. The whole world, the whole art will be good. God starts from families. God is interested in families. Do you understand? So having said that, we would go right into the topic, how do you build, how do you sustain a viable spiritual atmosphere for your home? Now, before we get into, into the point, I have like four points. I want you to, know, to understand that the spiritual realm is the mother of the physical realm. What do I mean by that? The bad things we see in the physical realm are from the spiritual realm. So whatever thing you are seeing happening in, the, in your physical space, it's just a, 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 an unfailing of the things that have happened in your spiritual atmosphere. So what do I mean by that? If you wake up one morning and you see that, um, that there is a loss in your business, it, that loss has taken place in the spiritual realm. Do you, do you understand that? So for example, Job, we see Job waking up one morning and he's losing his business, losing his children and we are wondering what is happening meanwhile those were just bettings of the spiritual realm a transaction had taken place in the spirit realm before that time satan went to god said have you um and god told him have you seen my, my servant job do this 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 and satan said i'm going to do this to him god said don't touch his life and satan went forth so you see that the happenings, the physical happenings in the family of Job, in his business, <coughs> sorry, were all a betting of the spirit realm. So what I'm trying to say is that your, oh, I forgot, my wife sends her regards, yes? Yes, 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 she extends her regards. And, um, okay. So I was saying that the spirit realm is the mother of the physical realm. Yes. So you must be careful to develop a viable spiritual atmosphere if you must have a good physical experience in your marriage, in your family. And I'll try as much as I can. I would I would I would make this um to be beneficial to the singles and to the married. So, number one, how do you build and how do you sustain a viable spiritual atmosphere so that the bad things in your physical space can be viable, so it can be fruitful? Number one, maintain an atmosphere of love. Avoid strife. You know, when you hear spiritual atmosphere, maybe you are taking prayer, fasting, study of the word of God every other thing but no where it starts from is maintaining an atmosphere of love avoiding strife as much as you can avoid strife 
Now, what does this do? The spirit of God is the spirit of love. Is the spirit of unity. Now, there is a flow of the spirit where there is love, where there is unity. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. You say, oh, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in what? In unity. Say, it is as they do that falls on Mount Hermon. No. Yeah, he went on as the oil that flows on the head of Aaron down to his beds, to his garments, and all that and all that. So, we see that there is a free flow of the anointing of the Spirit. <coughs> Sorry. When there is unity, when there is love in the atmosphere. And this is one area that the devil steps in. The, the, what, would I say the first thing? What the, one of the major things the devil tries to bring into homes in order to pollute the home is to bring in strife, to bring in bitterness. So we see that the husband is bitter against the wife. The wife is bitter against the husband. The children are bitter against their parents. Once that is achieved, the spiritual atmosphere has been scattered. I am telling you, the spiritual atmosphere has been scattered. So you 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 must be careful. Now, when you read the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, just to um buttress this point, Acts chapter 2, it said they were gathered together in one accord. They were gathered together in one accord and because of that oneness that was when the spirit came on the on that certain day of pentecost so you must try as much as you can to avoid all strife now there is a prayer so as a single well, how does this relate to you now it means that you must build yourself into a person that does not love strife <laughs> into a person of peace the scripture will say, as much as lies within you, be at peace with all men. So be a person of peace. Develop yourself into be. Don't love strife. <coughs> Run away from anything strife. <coughs> the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 11 talks about that two are better than one. When, you know, the four, one can raise each other up. So how does this apply to marriage? Now, there is a principle that I want to share with you. When one person is getting angry over something, the other person should try as much as possible not to get angry in counter measure. Because what normally happens is that one is getting angry, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, one person is getting angry, then the other person gets angry over the anger of the other person, and then two of them clash. So, two are better than one. So when one is down, the other should help the person up. So when one is angry, the other person should, you know, use love to pipe down the anger. So avoid strife. Avoid strife. And this also, let me just <coughs> make another point to singles. Now, when you are in a relationship, two of you cannot afford to be down at the same time. If not, you mess yourself up. So let's say you are you came visiting, and of course it's not good to visit where you are so 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 <coughs> alone. But let's assume that you visited and then you are just in the room and then you begin to see that the other person is feeling emotional. <laughs> if two of you are weak at that point, you will compromise. But the system of God is that one person will help the other person. So how do you help the other person? You run. <laughs> it's not only the devil that the scripture says, stand steadfast and resist. <laughs> but for your for your spouse, for the person in the, in the relationship with, you flee to save yourselves so that you don't fall into fornication. So two are better than one. Now, number two, because of our time, I'm trying to see how we can do this quickly. So that we don't have a long, a long um, video. Maintain family daily spiritual routine of the word of prayer. And then um, 
fastings, not daily. <coughs> if you want to do daily, fine, but fastings can be maybe once a week, twice a week, like my family we do twice a week. So maintain these spiritual routines. <coughs> Sorry. Now, Acts chapter 6, verse 4, it says, We will give ourselves to the word, ministry of the word, and to prayer. So we see that these two are pivotal in our work with God. Do you understand? They are pivotal in our work with God. So to build a spiritual atmosphere, you cannot not study the word and pray. Do you understand that English? You cannot not study the word and pray. So as I say, you begin to discipline yourself in the study of the word and in the prayer. It's a discipline. Because once you develop that discipline as a single, you will carry it into your marriage. There is no change that happens on the altar. When you go to say, I do, I do, I do, you don't become automatically transformed from someone that does not love studying the word of God to someone that loves studying the word of God, or someone that, that does not pray to someone that prays. Mm-mm. So it is who you are as a single that you carry into your marriage. So as a single, start <coughs> sorry, start um developing disciplines of study and of prayer to, to help you a lot. I can tell you that it is the meat that I ate as a single that I took into my marriage. Do you understand that? <coughs> so there's a, a, a normal saying that says a family that prays together stays together. It's true. And then I will add and can never be a prey to the devil. So when you pray together, you stay together and you exempt yourself, yourselves from being the prey of the devil. So to maintain a viable spiritual atmosphere, pray, study, fast together together <coughs> so 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 sorry my throat is is scratching me so one entrance of the devil is to 